Hey guys, I made this very specific pixel art tutorial recently and there were a lot of questions that I answered mostly all in the comments. But to make things easier for everyone, I made this quick video if you're having trouble making pixel art on Procreate. Also, I'm gonna make this process video. I'm gonna discuss what I have learned about pixel art over the course of making these pieces. First of all, the most common problem that people had, and this is kind of like my fault for not realizing it sooner, is the pixel grid itself. So when you're setting up your canvas, make sure that you're making a new canvas, not resizing the current one. And when you make a new canvas, make sure that the height and the width of the canvas are both even numbers. If they are even numbers, you will also be able to scale the canvas up later. But it's also important for setting up the pixel grid. So when you are setting the one pixel grid, if you are using even numbers, you can match the pixels exactly. Let's talk more about the one pixel brush. When you are creating this brush, make sure that you are picking 100% white. I recommend going to the HSB RGB tab of your colors panel to check these numbers to make sure that the color is exactly white because it might not be visible to the naked eye. And when you create your brush, make sure that you use this white as the image of the brush itself and also as the grain of your canvas. Anything that is not 100% completely white might lead your brush to be slightly transparent. Brush behavior is easy to understand after a bit of use, but at first it can feel a little bit fiddly before you understand how hitboxes work. And now I'm gonna explain hitboxes. The one pixel brush will create four pixels if you hit your grid in the middle of the cross section where those lines meet. If you hit that cross, Procreate will prioritize accuracy and creating paint in that exact area where the pencil touches the screen. So the middle part will create four pixels, but also there's a kind of like a danger zone at the midpoint where the horizontal and vertical lines of the boxes meet. In that area, if you touch a horizontal or vertical line, two pixels that are vertical or horizontal will be created. The part that you want to hit when you want to create a single pixel is just right in the middle of that square. And it takes some time to get used to it, but after some practice, it gets quite easy to know kind of like where that zone is. When you need extreme accuracy, I recommend turning the drawing assist on. So the pixel art piece that I created in this video is based on Game Boy Color and Game Boy Resolution. I thought that the natural progression to that for me would be to use NES resolution. So I just looked up it online. And if you want to use these resolutions, I have compiled this list so you can pick a resolution from these old game consoles. Uh, by the way, this is in no way necessary for pixel art. I just did it for nostalgia's sake for myself and just to see what it would be like to work with these restrictions. When starting with a piece like this that has a lot of detail in it, I honestly just use normal round brushes to block in these shapes and colors. These aren't pixel brushes and they create messy, smudgy edges to the sides, but I just use these to block in the composition and to see what I'm actually making. I honestly thought that I'm creating a city scene, but at the halfway point I radically changed my mind because I had this idea of a bear coming from a night shift and he wants to reward himself with a bucket of ice cream for working so late. So he comes to this bus stop to wait for a bus before going home. But this bus stop is special because usually it's high traffic because there's uh, this magical site behind him called the Monument Waystones. So these Waystones are a huge tourist attraction and that means that there's a lot of bus traffic going here during the day but it's early morning and there are no buses so the bear is kind of bored and on his phone just waiting for the bus to come. 
and I thought that this is too interesting of an idea to miss, so my whole city skyline idea is completely scrapped at this phase. By the way, if anybody has seen my dynamic symmetry tutorial here on this channel, I talk about the importance of odd and even numbers. That rule is kind of like used here for the staticness of everything, because the whole mood that I'm going for is very static and still. So I'm using the number of odds in a reverse way, because this isn't an alpaca running through the hills. This is a bear waiting and the time is moving very slowly. So for this piece, I'm using four pillars in the background and two lamp posts that are pretty much the same. And this reminds me of the days when I used to work at crappy jobs in cheap restaurants, washing dishes in the middle of the night, and then going home smelling like seafood <laughs> and grease, and then there would be just this quietness in the city that for a moment looked really beautiful. And I think that's the moment that I'm trying to capture here even if there's this like magical element to it. But, you know, art is life and so on. One more thing about these resolutions for pixel art that I found extremely uh, surprising is that even though this is an NES resolution, and if you look at these numbers, if you compare this Game Boy and Nintendo Entertainment System resolutions, they don't seem that drastically different. I mean, I thought that it's just a few more pixels more, but there was just so much more work in this resolution compared to the Game Boy Color. I said to my friend after making this that this was just way too many pixels for me, and I had way more fun doing the Game Boy Color one. It's not that I'm not happy with this piece, I'm really glad that I made it, but this is a lot of work. It's kind of hard to explain how in the hell just these few pixels make it so much more difficult, but it's a lot more information to fill in. Especially the way that I chose to make this piece, that I didn't want to have any like repeating trees. They are all quite different. Even the mountain features in the background, they're all unique. So there wasn't anything that I would kind of like copy paste easily and get more space filled out that way. But if you're thinking that pixel art is somehow faster, this took me about three days. So don't think that this is a fast way to make art, but it is a very fun way. Because especially at those lower resolutions, I would say that the Game Boy color resolution in particular, it makes it really relaxing to do pixel art when you don't have endless amount of options if you run into a problem. The benefit of using lesser pixels, for me at least, it's more fun to solve these small readability issues. Like for example here where I'm drawing the face of the bear, at first I'm drawing him to look completely different and then I go in and change just a few pixels in hue and that completely changes the look of the bear to more what I had in mind. This seems very doable for everybody. I think this isn't like a drawing skill thing, it's just you need to tweak the pixels that you have enough times to come out with something that works. If something looks messy, just keep working on it and it feels fun when you kind of like solve it like a puzzle. For some reason, this reminds me of playing Picross, and I love Picross and I love art, so this is kind of like the best of both worlds. Problem solving and doing art at the same time. Usually when painting, I use only about one layer and add a second one whenever necessary, for example, when I'm painting sky. But because the resolution is so low and these elements are so clearly separated, I use a bit more layers in pixel art on Procreate, just because there's basically no limit to it at all, because you have such a tiny image, it's easy to forget that you have endless amount of layers basically at your use. 
to create what you want. I use those layers to find the right colors. For example, all of these glowing artificial light elements, I use additive layers and then on those additive layers, I just go into hue and saturation and just kind of slide through the colors to see all the options available for me to find the right color. And then I color pick that color and then I go back into normal blend mode and continue painting with now this color that I have found through the use of blend modes. And it just makes finding the right colors quicker. At one point I noticed that the colors in the bus stop were kind of bland. So I just copied the entire bus stop and then adjusted the curves to this almost flat line. It only has to be at a slight angle and that makes all of the colors look a bit richer and deeper and it increases the contrast slightly. Just be careful if you do this that you don't go overboard with the saturation. So that's why I adjust the curves like this. Out of all the blend modes, I think multiply is the most dangerous one because it adds a lot of saturation at the same time when darkening the image. So it might seem seem like it's a good way to create shadows, but in all honesty, it tends to create two saturated shadows, at least for my eye. So whenever I'm using multiply blend mode, and that is very rarely, I use it with a very low saturation because I know that inherently that blend mode increases the saturation anyway, in combination with the layer underneath. When creating these transitions between light and dark in this piece, it's tempting to use just gradients or opacity, but everything in this piece has been created at 100% opacity pixel brush. Because I found personally, and I'm not trying to like impose this as a rule to anybody, that creating the transitions with 100% opacity and hand drawing them in retains this retro look better than having a gradient in there. That means that I usually try to have fewer transition colors that I would if I were painting these transitions in a normal painting. So for example, if you look at the reflections on the glass of this bus stop, there's only about three or four shades that create this illusion of color switching from light to dark in the reflections. So that would have been easier with gradients, but I think it would have broken the kind of look that I'm personally going for in this piece. And I'm very careful of not imposing any rules on people doing pixel art, because I remember vividly the first pixel art piece that I was doing, which is this bear piece. And I remember how terrible it was because I was doing this and then one game developer said that I'm using the wrong colors for pixel art. It's not real pixel art if you're not using this and he used this like example of a console color palette to me. And for somebody who was like just making their first pixel art piece, that felt kind of strange. But at the same time, I understand that maybe he was just trying to help. But honestly, everybody is free to make art with their own rules. But just if you feel that strongly about it, you can create art based on any rule set that you want to use. But just maybe don't try to push that stuff to other people. When I'm teaching concept art, this is something that I try to think about a lot, that how to talk about art and the composition rules so that I can kind of like not impose my own way of making art to the art students. Because it's not about me liking other people's art, it's about me giving them the tools to be their own creative selves and express themselves in their own way. And this is a hard skill and I'm sure that I'm still learning to be better at it, but it's still something that I strive for. And whenever I notice making explicit statements or rules, I think it's always important to know that there are always exceptions to rules. And that's what you want from art and creative people to break the rules and make something new. There's no point in me making authentic Game Boy Color, color palette, pixel art, because that stuff can be made by somebody else who feels passionate about it. I don't feel that passionate about it and it doesn't bring me joy. So it's better that I steer clear away from that. But I'm not saying that nobody should do it. Just go for wherever your curiosity drives you. And I think you will have the best results there. I think there's a lot of talk in the art scene about just going out of your comfort zone when 
in truth, anybody who is successful at anything is 100% in their comfort zone and doing what they love. And it's that excitement that will be infectious to other people and they will see your enthusiasm in your piece. So just let your free flag fly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Some of you have tagged me on Instagram and I have seen like so many awesome pixel art pieces. So keep doing that. And I think it would be cool to feature some of that art on this channel. I have to ask permission first, but I think it would be cool to show other people what you have made because it's just very inspiring to see somebody who hasn't made any pixel art before to just try it. And I recommend starting with that lower resolution because then it can be fun and quick and it doesn't have to like destroy your entire life. And who knows, maybe you'll love it because I certainly do. And this is my bus stop. I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out because it captures that moment that I was going for. I know that it, this is a fantasy piece, but I think it also tells something about my own life and my own experiences in a way that I want. Go make some really fun pixel art and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!